Hello, my name is Bill Tobin, and I'm a master superintendent with Land Lease. And I'm going to try and tell you guys everything I know about CLT construction from some hands on experience. Uh, public speaking uh, to a distinguished crowd like this is not normally my strength <laughs> and my skill set. So I've been warned by my senior management I have to watch my language. I'm used to talking with guys out in the field. <laughs> so. <clears throat> and I've been told I don't need a microphone most of the time, so I'm gonna, if I start shouting in here, please uh, somebody let me know. So with that said, i start with a pop quiz uh, right up front. Uh, how many owners and developers are in the room by show of hands? Okay. Um, how many engineers and architects and designers and specifiers? Okay. How many, how many people from the construction, general contractors? Okay, fair number. How many from the sub-tiers, sprinkler fitters, tin knockers, electricians? None. And that, there's one of, our, one of our first issues in collaboration. What we learned, what we learned in our project down in Huntsville, Alabama, Redstone, Army arsenal was, was the construction really was pretty much flawless. It, it really started way in advance of what we normally do in the construction process. So I'm a superintendent. I'm usually handed a bunch of documents. I make a schedule. My time gets cut short. My end date doesn't change. And I have to coordinate quality, production, safety, and logistics and jam it into a package that was handed to me. Lots of times in my 30 plus years of construction, I didn't even know what the building medium was until about a week and a half before I got there, maybe two. The leap of faith in cross laminated timber and what we learned down there in this project was to have all the stakeholders that put anything in, on, around, or under, or in close proximity to our structure. Uh, that meant getting, uh, making selections of trades way in advance. Uh, one of the other things that we uh, personally was very uncomfortable with in the medium was making a selection for our material provider way in advance. And that, that was very uncomfortable because I'm used to having, let's say in the concrete industry, I can go out and play my concrete subs. I can go out and play my form carpenters. I can go out and competitively bid. So it was a, a very unusual leap of faith to bring all these entities on very early. And so we, we had every, every stakeholder involved months, month, almost a year in advance of our actual physical execution, something I've never been really had the, the pleasure of doing before. So that, that, that was really the key. It's, and, and the project that we did down there, I've seen the presentations and a lot of some of your designs and whatnot that are absolutely gorgeous, just spectacular. And I, I, I dreamed to be on some of those beautiful jobs someday. But our redstone, our redstone job was, was a clad job. We, because of our, uh, our end user, IHG, Kenwood Suites, who operates for us, they did not want to have any of the uh, CLT exposed. So we, we were more of a utility industry grade, but we learned an awful lot of lessons in sequencing, design, coordination, installation, and, and, and actual fabrication. When I turn my head, does the mic go out? No? OK. <clears throat> so uh, let me see here. A little bit about Lend-Lease. Our group, the Nash we're based out of Nashville. Our group in Nashville is uh, a special business unit, and we are actually involved with military housing and uh, military privatized army lodging. So that's what my group that did the timber uh, for, for Huntsville, that's what we actually worked on. We have uh, the rest of Lend Lease. I won't bore you with how big we are, but we're all over the place. We're in Boston, New York, Washington, D.C., Raleigh, Durham, Chicago, San Francisco. Those guys focus on that, of those key markets. Our group, we focus on everything in between. We live light. We live out of a duffel bag, an airport, or a lot of miles on a pickup truck. <clears throat> we have everything in between. So here, let's see. So we focus on primarily uh, military privatization. So these are our locations on the military installations where we run about 40,000 and built and maintained. 
uh, and, and lease about 40,000 houses across all the services, Army, Navy, Air Force, uh, Marine Corps. This is where we exist in the Army privatized lodging program, which is again another privatization initiative where we are in all these initiatives where the, we are the developer, the designer, the builder, and then the, we manage and operate on 50-year agreements. So this is, these are the 40-plus, uh, 41-plus installations where we are present and active, actively working on, on hotel projects from renovation to new construction. This picture here kind of lumps it in. So you see that we are in not all 50 states, but we are spread across the United States and up into Alaska, and it's kind of hard to see, but we, and Hawaii as well. That's, that's a little bit about Lend-Lease. Cross-laminated timber. So about three years ago, uh, I had the opportunity to go to Seattle, and I can't remember the name of the conference, but I think it was the predecessor to this one. And I got to, uh, to experience uh, cross-laminated timber uh, for the first time, and I was extremely excited about it. it, it I've been, legally I can claim I've been working in this business for 35 years. There was some other time where I probably can't legally claim, <clears throat> but I've been working since a small boy in it, and it really caught my attention, and it was uh, very disrupting, uh, very disruptive because I've worked in all the conventional mediums, concrete, red iron, coal roll steel, and traditional stick. And as much as the industry thinks we're cowboys, right, in the construction industry, stick guys only do wood stick, coal roll steel guys only do coal roll steel, concrete guys don't do red iron very well and vice versa. They're really channelized. And so I, in my experience in the 26 years with Lend-Lease, I was able to basically self-perform in every medium. So when I saw this, I saw an opportunity for us to do more with less. It really, it really made a lot of sense from, from every aspect, from the social sustainability, and then from my walk of life, which is about production, cost, quality, and safety. Uh, not necessarily in that order, but all equally important. So the timber journey, kind of on a personal note, I was coming out of a rough spot in my life, very dark times, and the Druids got it right. Because the Druids believe, and I'm not a great historian, but they believed in the power and the life of, of the trees and the tree giving us life. And, and the CLT journey actually helped bring me some life. There's a couple guys in here I talked to that this initiative and where we're going in the industry is really giving them a new zest, new zest for life and what we're doing. So it really did bring something to me personally uh, that, that I'm not willing to give up. So in our, in our journey from 2013, as we start trying to study and figure out where we could make this work, these are some of the areas that we, we, we saw that CLT, especially at the pricing that we've been looking at, this was kind of the sweet spot. Schedule constraint with all these intersecting circles, we thought that represented uh, a pretty good opportunity where this, this made some sense. And we didn't just start this journey blind. My Australian cousin, Daryl, is right next door presenting uh, at the same time I am. I thought we were going to be able to talk across the wall for a little bit. <clears throat> but uh, so we, with Daryl in Australia, our buildings that uh, our cousins did in Australia and in the UK, after we got done with getting their sales pitch and the Hua Hua speeches, they got into the nuts and bolts and really started telling us the warts, the things to look out for. So we, we studied intently from them to learn their mistakes, their pros, their cons. Very collaborative, very open. It, it, was, it was actually very refreshing because normally you don't get that kind of cooperation. Uh, then we decided uh, that in, inside the DOD work, it's, it's actually privatization money. So we had the perfect opportunity to take CELT because Contractually, I can build it out of seaweed if I want to, if, as long as I can meet the force protection requirements and anti-terrorist protection, blast resistance. I can build it at any medium. And it's our contractual right. But still, our Army partner and my uh, Lend-Lease, we have a development side. So any, any of you that have a development side and a construction side in business, you know that even though you're under the same logo and name, you're two separate companies, right? 
We are. <laughs> so selling our project company and then selling our Army partner that this actually made sense was, was a long journey. So if, if it had been a normal construction process, I would have been talking to you a year ago instead of now. <laughs> These are just from our journey. These are some of the capabilities that we as the Timber Group uh, can, can provide and mix and match. Uh, as internal services to our own internal clients, other the other Lend-Lease offices and whatnot, or to external clients. I won't wear you down with all of that, but these are, these are the services that we have learned and provided. This is actually uh, Huntsville Redstone, Arm, uh, Alabama. This is some of the reinforcing that needed to be done around the perimeter to meet the, the force and blast protection requirements as mandated per the was it UFC. Uh, um, this was a last minute change, which upset us because we planned for years on exactly how we were going to execute every nut and bolt. This came in two weeks before we got started. That's over uh, two, besides the, the over 400 anchor bolts that go down into a very, very elaborate and large spread footing. There's over 2,000 and 2,040 Titan bolts that had to be laid out in coordination with the, with the, the steel uh, and to, to match the kerfing in the bottom of the panels that we'll see in a later picture. Very frustrating. Two weeks on our hands and knees, and, and the other uh, obstacle was made the command decision that we're going to work in metric, and that freaked my guys out and all of my subcontractors. So the first couple of days, we had all kinds of issues with metric. So I, and I bought tape measures that had both imperial and, and metric. And then the next week, I took them all, threw them away, and bought, gave everybody metric tapes. Our problems started to go away. So we laid out that 2,000 plus anchor bolts, and, and, and our partner on this was Nordic Structures. That's who we selected in the long run. Uh, we only had eight conflicts, and uh, seven of those was, was me. I put the bolt in the wrong location. <laughs> <clears throat> so, this is day one. So I have no, uh, have no fear, right, except speaking in public like this, but this is Friday the 13th. I kid you not. This is Friday the 13th. Our panels arrived. We'd finally set all that damn steel. My knees were sore. I didn't want to lay down anymore. I didn't kneel down anymore. We started setting panels. Friday the 13th, I don't believe in that superstition. Anybody know who Mur what Murphy's Law is, right? Anybody familiar with Gumperson? Gumperson's theory? Gumperson was an optimist, or uh, Murphy was an optimist, according to Gumperson. <laughs> and he was right that day. So how many guys does it take to put up a CLT panel? That's my entire job team right there, trying to figure out how to hook up the first plate to lift the first panel in place. <laughs> so what we're, in the next picture, we're actually setting the first stair shaft. So what we do in Lend-Lease, very robust safety program. We believe in trying to minimize the use of ladders and other safety measures. So our, our premise here was to build our stair, uh, stair towers up at least, those are 37 foot tall, so we're two and a half floors. Uh, with the upper, upper wall being a 42-inch guardrail and putting in our stairs so that by the time I get to my elevated platforms, my men are not working off ladders. We walk right out of the stairwell right onto our work surface. That tower took us 13 hours on Friday the 13th <laughs> to, to put up 10 panels. Uh, in the video, my bosses were watching from Nashville and they watched me put the first panel up and take it down three times. <laughs> And I got probably 25 phone calls. I said, if you guys don't stop calling me, I'm never even going to get this first panel back up. <clears throat> and part of that was the difficulty with, with the cutting and the reentrant steel, reentrant corners, and the channel we were trying to nest it into. And the heating and cutting of the steel caused the steel to warp. And the panel was true. The panel was true. So we had to make some modifications to the steel. So our first stair tower, 13 hours. And I thought, oh my god, what have I done? Because when I get to what I use for labor, you're going to, if any of you guys are bosses, you go, what were you thinking? You were not thinking. But we thought we were. 
We went home for the weekend, had a couple bourbons. On Monday, we started the next stair tower. I cut the crew down to three, myself and two guys. We put the stair tower up in seven hours. I had the crew guys learning how to put the stair stringers, treads, and risers in the first stair tower. The next day we came in, we put up the stair, uh, the elevator shaft, all the divider beams, spandrel panels, complete assembly, braced off. We did it in five hours. So within a couple of days, my totally inexperienced, non-CLT crew, and the majority of my crew was, had no construction experience, we were already starting to break it down into a smooth and fluid uh, program. So once we got through a couple of days of the shafts, here's a picture of the lobby with the beams. Um, I had a project, my construction manager you'll see here later on, his name was Pete Shan, he was a doubting Thomas. He, got, he, he was roped into being the construction manager of my four small man team. Uh, he's a little guy, he set every one of those columns. He got very mad at me because I was teaching him how to set uh, base plates and line them up, and I made him stay at night because it was a lot easier to do it with the lasers at nighttime. He set every one of those columns and set all the beams. I couldn't get him back in the office to be the construction manager. He was hooked. He was a convert within a couple of days. I only had three pieces of red iron in this building. I had a four-story load, as you see there in the back side of the lobby, because of a low roof. Had we done a glue lamb, which we wanted to, I only would have had six foot seven uh, clearance. So we opted to use red iron there, and then in the elevator hoistway, we needed, a, we needed red iron there. All the divider beams, everything else, everything was wood, glue lamb. Okay, sorry. <clears throat> Very safety conscious, we got to rolling floors. Uh, Lend-lease, no man works at height, tying off and, and active restraints is the last result, and I have to go damn near to Australia to get a permission to work that way. Everything we built, we put our safety and passive rails on, on, on the ground, so as the, as the panels came up into the air, my men who would receive the panel were working completely in a contained passive environment. It took a lot of coordination and sequencing and drilling that uh, we worked out with Nordic, because they, they thought we were crazy when we came back and said, I need a rail system in here. First floor quarter, lots of wood. We made a conscious decision to go all wood. Right? We, we did not want to skin it back and, and do hybrids. We made a decision, every internal wall, load-bearing, non-load-bearing, shear, external, interior, stairwell, mechanical room, everything, everything was CLT. This is an IQ test, right? Anybody can answer. What's wrong with this picture? Sir? Because uh, we took the picture and it wound up in a presentation as showing this is our stairs. And you are correct. You're the first person to actually get that right, believe it or not. They oriented the picture the wrong way. So that, that's the stair configuration. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not the normal presenter, but it took us all like four presentations of watching to realize that we had that one in there. This is shameless self-promotion. I actually worked. Uh, much to the chagrin of most of my colleagues, I worked out there for the entire duration. I had a blast. I had so much fun. I can't wait to do the next one. It was fun. We work hard. We play hard. I know I laugh and joke a lot, but we're very serious about what we're doing. We have a passion for what we're doing. And all my guys did every activity and willingly. There's our stair tower. Stairs are up. We block them off until we get up there. Again, some of the shoring of the elevators. Anybody want to take a guess at this picture? Okay, we're lifting a panel. But notice how clean and neat that yard is. I've run a lot of sites. And keeping material organized and clean, this wasn't staged for a Photoshop. A CLT, a CLT project, properly coordinated in logistics and flow, it was the smoothest running job I've ever had. Clean, neat. Our CLT operations barely generated one dumpster of, of wood debris. Mostly, most of that was dunnage. Probably generated another dunnage of plastic wrapping and banding and, and things like that. And we segregated all of our trash. That site is a, typical, is a typical site for CLT, clean and organized. That's the roof deck. 
That's the Motley crew. Something about my crew, three of us were prior, prior uh, construction skills. Uh, I had a four-man office management staff. And then I hired uh, veterans, most of them combat veterans. Some of, some of those boys, two and three tours, knew nothing about construction. Those guys have the ability to show up, work long hours, do what they're told, learn under stress, duress, and pressure. They were excellent. I would take them again anywhere. If, you're not, if you can't sign your work, don't do it, right? There's no monuments to, to those of us who build these things. But you need to be proud enough to put your name on your work. And, and my team was very, very proud that day we set the last panel. Some of the other innovations, because we're timber and innovations we brought, we built components. We built components, bathroom pods. Uh, I built the bathroom pods off-site and cheaper than if I built them on-site. They had everything but the toilet paper and the shower curtains. Commodes were in the tub, all the risers built into the wall, all the MEPs, whips, and ties. So, this picture here is we're actually on the upper floors, the DBQs are direct set. On the lower floors, we actually distinguish visitor quarters. They're much bigger pods. The lower floors, we just rough set them in the unit, and once we dried in the floor deck, we rolled them into place, set them, and started the connection operation. A couple more pictures of the pods going into place. Couldn't bury the plastic, couldn't meet the flame and, and smoke spread inside the rated wall assemblies, so we left the lids on to try and keep moisture out. It worked fairly well. Going into place, going into place. Again, my, my lay down logistics yard, that's a typical day. Clean, neat, organized, safe. Okay, all right, all right. There it's almost done, right? I don't have any finished pictures at the moment. This is the part that most people like the most. The, the four guys to the right were the CLT mafia. They told us no, and no to me means Yes, but just not right now. It took us a long time to convince everybody to use CLT, but somebody had to do it, and we pushed and pushed hard and, and didn't back up. So over here on the side, gross square footage. We've been building these in coal roll steel on about six other installations prior to Redstone, and our average square footage was 54,891. Redstone was actually bigger. Uh, it grew a little bit because of the demising walls, but in reality, the, uh, the, the, the square footage requirements for IHG changed, so the building grew. So, with that crew, I basically, in, 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 I built a building that was 15, 14% bigger. I built it in 37% less days with 43% less employees. And these are based off real numbers off my best job that I did in coal roll steel. Uh, my man hours, you see, were almost 44%. Um, so my, my square foot per day, which is kind of, kind of a crazy number, but I, was 70, I built, put up 75% more, more building a day. And my follow-on trades, the minute I lit it out, put that deck on that first floor, I had my trades right underneath me. So from a performance, we knocked almost three months off the schedule. And I had demolition. I had to tear down buildings also on this project. So it wasn't a, it wasn't a brownfield or greenfield site. So overall, we were 37% faster, cost neutral to metal, coal roll steel framing in the force protection environment, which has lots of strapping, blocking, and bridging. Environmentally, our building model is 31% more energy efficient. And we sequestered almost 1,600 tons of, uh, of carbon. Socially, we upskilled and, and, and brought uh, upskilled uh, veterans into the trades. And in our robust safety program, I virtually eliminated falls in every activity for all of my men. Smart design still can't eliminate human error because we're people. And uh, this next picture was done by one of my college boys. He got, he got <laughs> and he had enough gall to come ask me for something to take the nails out. I said, you want a cat's paw? He goes, well, if a cat's paw will work. <clears throat> but he had enough guts to take a picture and show me what he'd done. So we, we enjoyed the experience. Here's my construction manager, Pete. <clears throat> Our safety program says we have to use these damn platform ladders. They're a pain in the ass. I hate them. So I was helping Pete, showing him how to lay out the beams for the mechanical chases. He said, I don't need you. I'll get it done. 
got it all done, nailed in place, all the gang nails, and went, damn. <laughs> Had enough guts to take a picture and share it with us and, and laugh and celebrate, you know, the learning experience. We had a big debate, but at $496 a ladder, we pulled all the nails out. <laughs> I went over on small tools and consumables. We blew, we blew up some equipment in the screwing. Uh, 220,000 screws at compound angles from a lot. We burned up a lot of equipment. What this type of project takes and what our industry needs is we need open minds, a lot of mutual respect, thick skin, collaboration, communication, trust, and overall, no fear. We've got to break the barrier of talking about it and move out, get this thing going. Here's a snapshot of, of what we believe as, a, as the team, as an R&D, as the R&D that needs to take place. And, and I think I've heard this, this is a common theme. I've seen it in almost every presentation. So nothing groundbreaking there, but by getting them up and moving forward and doing the work, I'm, I hope to break this industry wide open. All right, real quick time-lapse video. This is, this is Alabama, snow, ice storms. We started at 10 degrees. Even the Alabama boys were like, what is going on here? Friday the 13th. Note, anybody puts a job site camera up, do not let your vendors and suppliers try and measure and meter their deliveries based on this camera. Uh, Nordic, their shop foreman, shipping foreman decided that I wasn't doing any work because once that front wall, what if he didn't realize we were putting the walls up in the interior, they stopped sending trucks. One well-placed phone call, we got over that. So, <laughs> I can't repeat what I said. <clears throat> not here. This was a quote from one of our leaders. Uh, it's also a picture of, of how our passive systems go up. Uh, to be able to work and set 400 square foot of floor plate every 21 minutes is something I've never done in my life with my best crews. And be safe, no ladders. CLT is the way to go. It's, res it's a responsible way to work, take care of our workers, right? Uh, take care of our workers, do more with less, change, change the outcomes. We can do it. But it takes all that planning, all those stakeholders way, way, way out in advance. So thank you for letting me speak to you today. Thank you.